Good morning, well, everyone. Welcome. Um, I just want to remind everyone that this meeting is being recorded to the cloud. The Town of Amherst will upload it to our YouTube Town of Amherst channel so that everyone can view it. Um, thanks, everyone, for being here. Take it away, Christine. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome to the Jones Library Design Subcommittee, Friday, June 3rd, 8.30 a.m. Um, I We have a quorum, and I will do a roll call. Um, Let's see here. Sharon Shari. Here. Austin Surratt. It's Sarah. Sarah. I listened I, to Sarah. See, okay. doing the French thing. We just talked about this with. <laughs> call, uh, me, and, call me anything you want. I'm present. No. <laughs> Surratt. 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 Is that correct, Austin? I'm present, Christine. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> want to say it right. And again, I'm not. Okay. So, uh, and we have a Craig here. Hello. Our OPM. We also have some, uh, our designers here. Mm -hmm. um, Ellen Ancelone. Mm -hmm. And please tell me if I'm not saying it right. No, it's good. Uh, Ancelone, but I'll take Ancelone. Ancelone. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Ancelone. And Tony, mm, I'll, I'll, I'll spare it. Shall. Oh, say that again, please. Shall. Shall. It's just silent, yes. <clears throat> Thank you. And uh, I think that's everyone, uh, uh, along with our assistant, Angela Mills. Well, okay. we have, it, Christine, okay. we have it, Josephine Penta from our office. And oh, is she in the other. Oh, in, oh, she no, just she's here. In. In, Hi, Josephine. Hi, Steve lot. And I don't, Steve, I hope I'm not butchering your last name. <laughs> and Liot, but it's close. I'll take it. Okay. And Liot. We got, okay. <laughs> oh, this is good. I'm glad we're having this moment. And then, Christine, there's, there's one more who just joined from my office, uh, and that's Will Fernandez. So he's new to the team, and he's going to be helping us out um, on this project and a couple other projects. I'm glad you mentioned that. I don't uh, to see to see the full cast of characters, you've got to go to participants down at the bottom. Oh, I, I have the panel thing up. I have 10 panelists. I don't see Will. Craig, uh, Craig. His name is coming up as my name, I think, probably. Uh, oh, it oh is. See, thank you. Thank you. I have two Craigs. Yes, but sometimes people do that. So, OK. Hi, Will. Uh, OK. <laughs> Great to meet everyone. Looking forward to getting started. Great. Good to see you. All right. Great. We can get started now. So um, we do we don't have minutes right now, so we'll skip item two and we'll go to item three. Welcome, Feingold Alexander Architects. Uh, we're here today to talk about exterior materials. Excellent. Um, thank you for having us back. Uh, early on Friday. So we're, we put together, we met in house a couple of times this past week, and we looked at different options that we thought based on our experience, we could afford for this project. And we put together a slide deck that Tony's going to take us through. And please, you know, chime in if you have any comments or questions or thoughts. Great. Um, so hi, everyone. Glad to be here on uh, this Friday morning. I'm going to uh, screen share and try to pull up the show. If there's any issues or glitches on my end, we do have Steve as a backup, just in case if there's something on my computer. I'll do the best I can. So I'm going to try to bring it up. Just bear with me. Can you see the um, presentation? Mm -hmm. yes. yes, we can. OK. Very good. All right, I'm going to just kind of go through this. Um, so what we've done here is we've organized the um, review of the exterior proposed materials um, based on uh, what we have designed and also looking at a couple of options for consideration. But just to remind folks, of course, you know this really well, this is your current and existing library, which has this beautiful, you know, uh, stone sort of field stone wall uh, situation and has a sort of mixture of grays and warm grays and browns and, you know, tan and cream color so, so it's a, you know it's a really beautiful building has a lot of interest and that actually is interesting for us because there's things we can key off on this because it creates a palette um, that allow, affords us some range of options to consider um, and as we looked at what this is now the rendering this is what we had shown 
and uh, produce. Um, and what we see here again, just uh, in the proposed uh, edition was to really be sort of complementary in the intent. So the idea was to do um, choice of materials that would complement and work well with the existing building, um, but of course be be different because it is a different palette of materials, um, which we're going to get into in a moment. But this is a reminder of what this uh, proposed design looks like from the front um, of the library. And then as we move to the um, to the back side, of course, this is where the library new edition really um, emanates um, further. And what I want to point out is a couple of key things in the design. Uh, what we're looking at here is an approach that not only tries to complement, but builds on certain qualities. Uh, so for example, we organize the idea that the building is read in several ways. There's a kind of a base condition, um, this idea of doing something that anchors the building down because the site is dropping the story from the front to the back. So that's what you're seeing here in the kind of darker, slightly darker gray tone. I don't know if you can see my mouse hovering over it, but that's, that's what's being shown here. Uh, and then the upper main body of the edition um, is, is another material. And in this case, what's being rendered here essentially is like brick, um, as is shown in this instance, but we do have some variations we want to discuss with you all. Uh, and then there are other feature elements, of course, that pop up is that when we begin to shape the you know, upper area and sort of scale back the, the roof. Um, so we're here we're seeing a kind of a standing sea metal roof with a series of kind of projecting uh, dormer elements um, to the left over here. We also have the standing seam roof, but then here we have a kind of a larger window wall treatment related to the interior library functions. And then in this particular, when the gap between the two massing forms, this is largely a glass wall, um, what, we, what we in our terminology calls a curtain wall system. So this is, an, this is an another area. And then of course we have the individual windows which punch into the openings. Um, so I'm gonna kind of go through this and the, um, in order to try to help organize this, um, we kind of did systematically kind of material by material. So the first one, we'll pull in a little bit here. I'm gonna talk about the base. Um, so there are a couple of thoughts that we had regarding this and, and this rendering, it makes it look almost more like kind of a field stone wall effect, kind of playing off the stone qualities of the existing libraries. Um, so there are a couple of options here. So there's two ways we can think about this. First is we can go more basic. We can consider it as brick. Um, so the whole thing is thought of as brick. Of course, there's a huge range of brick palette and color, but we just pulled together some examples and samples. And, and we're thinking along the lines that is going to be sort of complementary to that kind of warm, gray, tan, brown palette. Um, we are thinking perhaps that it might go a little bit more what we call monolithic, um, but this is something we want to discuss with you. So, uh, for example, the one to the lower right, that's sort of more monolithic. It's kind of a more similar palette of gray. The upper right photograph here kind of shows a little bit more variegation. So there's a lot of ways we can go with this. And of course, brick can come in a huge number of range of types. And these examples here, they're just samples to just simply illustrate how of course, brick can change a lot depending on the mixture. So, so one thought is that we go with brick. And Tony, one quick thing: it we don't recommend red brick at all. So it's yep. as Tony said, it's within the family of the of the stone on the existing building. Yes, exactly. In in our from the historic folks that we deal with, uh, Mass Historic, um, in landmarks in Boston, they tend to want us to make the addition look different. Right. Um, so that's a discussion that we will have with them. But our point of this discussion today is figuring out what materials we we're going to carry through SDs to get a cost estimate on, and then we can talk color with MHC. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Ellen. Okay, so um, so that's this is one uh, kind of literally no pun intended base option. Um, Another option is something more like this. Um, this is actually a project we did at, um, at Tufts um, in the Grafton campus. And this is called slate sculpting. Essentially it's slate, but you can see here on the photo on the right, which is kind of a little bit more modeled and variegated, which kind of has some recall to the existing library. It has a more kind of a textural quality to it. And it is literally smaller pieces of slate that are organized and creating this sort of effect. And the image on the upper left, that is the, the sculpting slate, and it's literally because it's called that because it literally the slate has a sculpting quality, right? It's not just flat, flat and smooth. And the difference you can see here, for example, in this one on the right, this upper portion here, which has the you know the, the title of the building, that's smooth slate. So there's a you know a substantial difference between the sculpting slate and the smooth slate. So our thought was more of this. Um, 
because it has more of the textual quality and it has some recall to the existing library. So this is another option uh, that we're going to, you know, price and consider. Can I say one thing, Tony, before we leave that? So sure. the sculpting slate is the the spoils of this of slate when they cut the slate. It's the leftovers. So it's actually quite nice and it's uh, friendly to the budget. Yeah, and that's that's a great point because in some respects, you know, in a way like a field stone wall, which there's certain qualities almost like the existing library has, you know, that's why the stone on the library varies, right? Because it's kind of comprising of a wide range of stones. And, the, and of course the masons were very skilled in putting them together and, and they do cut and pose them. But, but to Ellen's point, that is exactly what this is. Um, it is really like the leftover slate um, elements and it is in fact cost effective for that reason but yet it's i think quite beautiful even labor wise like is that harder to do than right? no it's because they're they're all the and we'll bring a sample from this yep. job josephine and i both have samples that we kept because they're so neat they're they're um flat on the top and bottom so they're easy for a mason to lay up right okay. great thanks the great question. <clears throat> so uh, I'm going to just keep going. And of course, please feel free to interrupt, but I'm just going to kind of go through this. So the next area we talked about, which is identified as number two, is the main body of the, of the library edition itself and really comprises, you know, the bulk of the materials you can see here and here in the upper two stories. <clears throat> so again, of course, the same palette, it could be brick. So we continue the brick idea, and this is already similar along the lines of what I just previously described in the option one for the base. So it's that idea of using brick on the upper part. And then the other option okay. actually were well, considered- Can I just jump in one? I'm sorry to keep interrupting That's okay. you. That's all right. But um, so currently in our budget is brick. That's what we have. So we, our task was to, is there an alternate that could satisfy to help um, you know, as an option to uh, be more friendly to the budget. So that's what we did some exploring with uh, over the uh, past week. Thank you. So uh, as Ellen said, the other option we are looking at is what we call this sort of, um, in some ways it's a metal panel system. Um, and one of the really interesting properties about this kind of product is that it is already built in highly insulated. It tends to be very lightweight. It tends to go up quickly because they actually come in larger sections. Um, and so therefore erecting um, on site, it's, it's because unlike the individual masonry units like brick or that sculpting uh, slate, these come in larger panels. So they actually go up fast and they have built in insulating qualities, which are also very energy efficient um, from, a, from that standpoint, from a sustainability approach. So there are a wide range of how this product can also be done. Um, these are just a few examples. One of the things that we thought about, if, if we look at it something like this, we wanted to do some scale to it. So for example, you can see here, both the samples here and then this, these kind of photograph, there's some colors that we can introduce that kind of creates a more kind of a horizontality to it. In some ways, it's kind of like a modern interpretation of like clapboard siding, but done in metal. Um, and so you can see, even though the panels, for example, are larger, and, and if there's really technical questions, Steve and others can answer who you know did some of this research. But here you can see how this works. They can do a dip and scale. They can have some that can step out. And you can see on the phone on the right that they create shadow lines. So there's a lot of lot of ways we can work with this material. Um, is there anything else, Alan, you wanted to add or any others? Here, you're on mute. We have the slide that shows the yep. actually insulated panel. Okay. I think so. Here. Yeah. So let me just say a couple of things about this, Tony, and then you can chime in. So yes. this is Framingham Library. So what happened on that is that um, they went in for town funding, I think, four years or three years after we established the budget, and they didn't escalate it. Right, so we started this project a little bit behind the ball, so we had to be very creative in the material selection for the library so we could hit the budget, which we did. Uh, so this is the first time we've used this product. So the, the what you see is the DS60 and the DS59. That yellow uh, material is the insulation. So these panels come as a total unit. So it's it's one subcontractor. So it has the insulation, the AVB, and the exterior materials. So it saves. This might be a whirlwind of information for you, but it saves a lot of time. 
um, and it saves money. And that's why we're proposing it for this because it's it's proved to us that it it can work uh, quite well and look beautiful. Uh, and it still looks great today. And it's it's how long has it been, Tony? Well, this is at least now probably six six years yeah, plus. Yeah. Um, and to follow Zelda's point, the product not only is it integrated and highly insulating for an yeah. energy standpoint, but the the surface finishes has a has a really long lifespan in terms of like this is not painted, so this is integral to it. So we don't have the kind of maintenance issue that you might have with some other products, for example. Um, so that inherent quality of it being highly sustainable, quick to erect in the field you know, fairly lightweight, but highly insulating, uh, makes it, a, and, and cost effective, um, I think makes it a potentially viable alternative for consideration to say masonry or brick uh, for those reasons. But it has a different look. Um, and then you can see here that particular design of the Framingham was based on this, um, seeing that's why you're kind of seeing the all heading large, small, large, small. So there's a lot of ways we can take this material um, uh, through, but this is an example of one that we did at a library a few years ago. I just ask a question to clarify. Please. So, is it about the same cost as brick, or it's less expensive? We believe we, Christine, we couldn't get any cost in such a short period of time. We're going to follow up with that. From our experience, it's less. Okay, good to know. And that's why we're proposing it. And part of our thing, and you know, because we've been doing libraries for a long time, is we need to provide materials that are essentially no maintenance, and this is one of them. Uh, this in brick and stone, and this these are affordable and you know stand the test of time in terms of uh, quality. And I uh, so that's exactly my question. I, I mean, all these options are beautiful. Love it. Pick anyone, whatever you love. But my my question is the long term costs. I know in New England, brick lasts forever. Mm -hmm. What about this centria and the slate? Is it sculpting or sculping? Either way, um, do they last as long as brick, or am I going to have birds nesting in this in those cute little? No, you won't have birds nesting because we always wor worry about that because we're in the city and there's a lot of pigeons. Yeah, um, yeah. So, but no, the um, there's no maintenance with this. Okay. None, uh, and that's the beauty of it. Um, we only did one library with a little bit of wood on it, and that was Westwood because they could have they had the budget for maintenance. And most towns don't. No, I would okay. say that to follow your point, though, Sharon, because this is a relatively newer product, certainly compared to brick and and slate is inherently like brick. I mean, right. you, as you well know, slate yeah. like slate. I mean, those products are like hundred years. So we know inherently slate and brick. Um, to your question, are, are absolutely a long lasting and very appropriate for New England. This product is is a very well made product. It is man made. Uh, it does have a very long life, but will it last a hundred years? I mean, I don't know. We don't have. There's not enough history on this. It's not that old the product. Um, but I do. I think that the the manufacturers have been using the kind of insulated panels for a number of decades, yeah. and it's proven it's proven very well. And it, again, to Ellen's point, it's very low cost and low maintenance um, for the most part. So. Uh, but but like anything else, you know, beyond a certain time, it's it's you know one can only speculate. Sure, no, that's awesome, and I'm not even necessarily looking out a hundred years. I, I mm -hmm. I'm not I'm I'm looking at, you know, like every five years yeah. is the town going to have to put money into. <laughs> so, for example, you mentioned the slate. We have slate roofs. It's a nightmare. Those those silly panel, uh, the the pieces of slate are constantly falling down. Yeah. Um, so, uh, would we have that same problem with the the slate sculpting? Sculpting? No. 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 Awesome. It's a completely different issue, and also the location right. of this. And for various reasons, uh, the slate roofs. You're absolutely right. I mean, they're very long lasting. But of course, when individual slates start to fall and break <laughs> off, and it isn't maintenance issue. Uh, the sculpting stake actually helps because inherently it's it's thicker, plus they're stacking and it's on a wall, not on a roof. Thank you. The chair and didn't just you to get... add oh go ahead just been sorry go this ahead. the slate sculpting wall is basically like a brick wall the way it's built up. So it's laid the same way and mm -hmm. and, and proves to be the same pretty much as a any masonry wall that you would see. Beautiful. Thank you. But Sharon my question to you and we were talking about this yesterday four years ago when we were very active on this project, four or five or six, there was talk about redoing the slate roof on the existing building. Did that ever get done or it was just uh, repaired? Yeah, and it was hardly even repaired. So yeah, okay. that will, there's a cost associated with that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, any further questions about this? Before we just, move on? Um, looking especially at DS-59 and 
uh, DS60 and how they sort of like curve down and then there's like a ledge. Mm -hmm. I'm asking because um, on some construction that I've been involved with, we used wood clapboard siding, mm -hmm. which is painted, which maybe that is why there's more of a sticky element to it. But it really, the dirt builds up on those little ledges. Would maintenance, like once in a while, do they have to wash these or I, you know, what happened with the Framingham branch here? Do they get- We, we can ask that, we, we're still in touch with them. We're happy to ask them. Um, I don't, I think the rain washes some off, Christine, but it's a good question. We'll, we'll, we'll reach out to them. I'm happy to do that. Yeah, yeah I mean, like if it's gotten dirty yeah. or if they have to wash it, yeah. just, I think that would be important for us to know for them. Well, it's a great question. Um, yeah. I, I think you can see in some ways, in, and, and I think that why they shape the profile, right? With this kind of angle, that's per, in particular to deal with the washing off water um, off the product so it doesn't, you know, stick. Um, but we'll follow up on that mm -hmm. and try to get you some more answers. Thanks. Okay. Um, any other questions? If not, I'll keep going. All right. Okay. Um, then the third area, number three, is, a, is of course this glass area in between the two masses. And this is essentially what we're calling curtain wall. And we can explain a little bit what the technical difference is between curtain wall and window walls and windows. But um, it's essentially, it's, it's a product that allows you to do large areas of glass. And it is, it is, it's inherently able to do this because it's a different kind of system that is integral. So for example, and, and please, when we show these like presents, this is not the design, we're trying to just illustrate the wow. use of the product. So please don't interpret that as like, well, that's what this looks like. So um, you can see in these areas here, for example, Conair is a very common, there are many curtain wall manufacturers. This is actually one of the major ones uh, in the United States um, that do all over the country. It's like this, so you can see here, and like here and in here, this is how they handle large expanses of glass. And because it's all an integrated, you know, highly uh, developed and highly, um, you know, worked out detail, it it's enables them to do these large areas of glass. And, and I'm sure for many of you have seen buildings with large expanses of glass, that's what they do. It's a curtain wall system um, and it's, it's and enables to do that, uh, for example, here, because it, unlike a window or window wall, they're finite dimensional constraints, when we'll talk about it on another slide in a minute, this gives much bigger areas of glass. I mean, I know Ellen, if you want to add anything to this? No, I think that's it, Tony. And again, don't be thrown off by the images, but it's it's quite common. Um, I'm sure Craig and his team have, have worked with the product before as well. Okay. Yes, yeah, curtain wall is one of the standard uh, materials or systems that uh, modern buildings are made with. Right, and again, this what is what's illustrated in our rendering is priced. So that's currently in the price. Yeah, this area of glass. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. I love the look of it. Um, just wondering about sustainability. Mm -hmm. How you know is it insulated? You know, mm -hmm. or is it just? It's ins. I don't know if you want to chime in, Josephine. I don't want to hug all the the fun stuff. Um, <laughs> But it's insulated glass, Christine, uh, with an, uh, uh, a get, um, uh, I don't want to call it a gas inside it. So it's insulated. But it, as you see from the design, it's limited where we're using these expan the expanse of glass. Yeah, it's only contained it here. It's, it's very minimal um, because we did take that into account. I mean, you took it into account in terms of achieving our, um, our energy conservation goals. The EU. Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. No. Other... Uh, this glass, just to, to remind myself, is on the north side of the building. And uh, again, in terms of the use of the glass on the north side of the building, it, does that affect it in any way? I mean, no. I think that. I, no, I think it doesn't affect the, it does affect the performance of it. I think, as you said to Alan's point, um, the insulation properties in the glass can inherently be uh, achieved in different levels. Um, some of them, and we're not proposing it here, but for example, in other projects, uh, some have even gone to like triple glaze, like there's three panes of glass, right? I mean, that's highly insulating. Uh, some others have filled sometimes um, a product in between the glass. Um, so this particular product has a lot of ways to do it. Um, and it was taken into account in terms of the overall building energy efficiency EUI analysis when we did this. So that's why we contained it to that one area and not spread it across the entire library because that's the reason 
Of mm -hmm. course, it's not going to be as insulating as wall, you know, solid wall would be. Right. And one of the problems that one encounters with, with this. What problems? So again, I'm just sitting here thinking, I wonder what, what was happening in 1992 when people were talking about the skylight. <laughs> and, uh, no one, you know, said, "Well, the skylight, that's beautiful." But I wonder what happens. Uh, what are the problems that one encounters with this kind of design? So every design has problems, right? They're not, they're not, it's not perfect, right? What are the issues that one has encountered with this kind of um, setup? The issues. Uh, one thing, it, it has to be installed properly, right? So that's from the get go. Okay. It's in, if it's installed properly and sealed properly, you will not have any problems for many years. Over time, will you, you know, there's a sealant yep. that goes around yep. it. And, yep. and if you want to get in the details, we can do that on another call. But over time, the sealant may need to be um, redone. Okay. But I can't, if that could be 20 years out. Yeah, I, I can think. Go to back to the um, rendering of, thank you. It, it's helpful to just look at what we're talking about. I think I think I'll fall to your question, Austin. To um, one of the pluses, I think, since the time that you've had issues with your skylight, I guess it was done in the '90s or so. There's been a lot of advancement in the technology oh, yeah. of all of this product, and, and it's right. much much better built today, um, even compared to current wall systems 20 years ago. So, building not only because of energy issues and sustainable issues, all of these products have upped their ante considerably. So they're much better made. They're much okay. much longer lasting. And furthermore, because this is on a wall again, not on a skylight, yep. so that 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 obviates a lot of issues or avoids a lot of the issues that a skylight has, because the fact of the matter is simply on a wall and not on a roof. So I think for those reasons alone, it's a much much higher quality product today uh, than even would have been two decades ago. But the, all these are all good questions. Absolutely. Okay. And Another. there is a benefit also. Um, Austin, to be on the north side. So one of the yep. challenges with this is the solar heat gain when yep. it's on the south and west. Yep. Yeah, exactly. That's for Bella's point, it's actually better from an energy standpoint in this instance. Um, okay. Uh, then the number four, um, this other fairly large area of glass here um, is this area that we've been talking about related to this part of the library, you know, which contains mainly the adult um, portions of the collections and then the areas looking out in the garden. So here, um, this is what is called a storefront system. So again, this is uh, also another example from Conier, but there are many, again, there are many manufacturers mm -hmm. that do this. So the, the main differential here versus the curtain wall system is that the storefront system has a lot of the appearance of a curtain wall, but um, it is built up more of um, a kind of a, a series of parts and it doesn't quite have the same ability to expand in terms of area. So in other words, Curtain wall can get very large expanse of glass. You know, it can go several stories high, it can go wide. I mean, you know, like high rise buildings are all curtain wall systems. This system here is, is, is less expensive than curtain wall, mm -hmm. um, but it achieves fairly large areas of glass. So that is what we're looking at here for those areas on that, again, on this rendering, because these are still, you know, quite big windows. Um, so we're looking at a product that allows us to do that but in a you know fairly cost effective way and again these are just examples that you see both down here and also here and you know you can see there's a large areas of glass uh, set within that so this is this is what is proposed in that part of the library so the difference between the two is that the curtain wall has more structural stability to it so it can span higher vertical distances store and it's a little bit of a cost premium storefront cannot it's limited to about spanning 12 feet right, and yeah. it is cheaper than curtain wall so that's why we only have a featured area with the curtain wall and as the, the project evolves can it turn into store storefront yes it would you know change things a little bit but again this is what we currently have in the budget great i okay. just have a question our current library and i understand why we wouldn't want this but just in case people are wondering our current library windows open all over the place because it was that homey feel. Will any of these open and why wouldn't they open? They'll open. And the question is, Christine, how much? There's a double-edged sword. Yeah. The building maintenance people hate operable windows. 
because people forget to shut them and it throws off the heating and cooling system. Mm -hmm. um, but most humans want to be able to open a window. So we put, we sprinkle, we sprinkle a few in, uh, it, uh, in every area. So it, you know, in the end, if it's a problem, you know, sharing can, there's a device that you can just lock them. Yeah, you know. no. So it's, I'm so glad you brought this up, Christine. So actually the MBLC feels very strongly that as many windows as possible are operable because HVACs break down and there is a beautiful spring and there's a beautiful summer and there are even some beautiful summer days, uh, fall, you know, so yeah, operable is the way to go. Well, I think also in following up and, you know, as we've all been experiencing COVID, um, one of the big yes. issues with buildings is not making them seal tight. Um, like in the past, all buildings were all environmentally controlled, but no ability to create natural ventilation. So there's clearly much more importance stressing on natural ventilation. So it does require being a little bit more mindful. Mm -hmm. And yes, you do have to go around the library and checking, make sure all the windows are closed before you shut it down. I mean, so there will be some of that, but, but for sure, people absolutely love fresh air on a beautiful, you know, spring day and, um, or fall day. And it's, 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 it's actually also healthy. Right. So. I have a, just a procedural question. It's nine o'clock. What what is it that we need to do um, with these uh, with these exterior materials questions? I think, Austin, we are sharing this with you to share the range. Ultimately, we're going to have to give you cost considerations right. and then then really work with you on a decision like, do you like this or do you not like this or give it a choice? I prefer this versus that. I would I'd be I'd be curious just to get from the group a gut reaction to the from the brick to the metal right. is the metal just not do you think that's just crazy talk so i'm gonna just start for myself and say crazy talk is not a word i would use but it's in the range okay so, um i i'm thinking about the metal in relationship to the historic building mm -hmm. and it just the the framingham building that you showed uh mm -hmm. it just for myself it doesn't feel like that's where we would want to go. Mm -hmm. I do have a question about the sculpting, sculpted slate, mm -hmm. which is, is that a usable material in different shades, for example, throughout the, the what you have labeled one, uh, one, and, one and two? Mm -hmm. I don't, Josephine, do you know if it comes in different colors? Well, you okay. showed it in different. You, I think you showed it in different colors. So that was a, that was brick that we showed in different colors. Also, different go, colors. go back to the slide. Go back to the slide with the slate. I know Vermont slate offers different colors of the slate, and I would imagine it holds true for the sculpting. But so we would. What I'm try. looking at is the one below. The, this you see, it looks like it's brownish. That's a photograph. Okay, it's just the time of day. Yeah. It, the color changes. This is this is probably much more true. Here, um, what you're seeing here and here, that's kind of that bluish kind of gray color that, you know, you think of slate, it's like right. that. Is it usable um, throughout the one and two? Yeah. I mean, the whole building? Yeah, you could. Okay. It's possible. And yeah. one thing we'll check though, that because the color is a good question. Everybody knows slate is kind of in the range of grays and greens, but there yeah, may like be this. one that's a little more green that, uh, you know, the group would like. So we can do that investigating right so samples. you'll look into colors of the yeah, we'll, we'll yeah it, but samples. it's a limited yeah. range we're not going to get like purple yeah gray. brick has more range than slate yeah. For sure. yeah can we go back to four so we can finish yeah. the presentation because yeah. i think we still need to hear about roofs and then we yeah. can start thinking about the layers of this cake yep um okay right so to follow your point uh christine number five is the roof so the roof is proposed as what we call a metal standing seam roof it has you know, why you see these lines here, that's really the standing seam is how the roof is, you know, created and put together. So, um, and, and I'm, I'm sure many have seen, there are many, many examples throughout New England. Um, these are just a few, but again, it's the way that it, it is done and it's sort of these interlocking, uh, you know, roof elements, that's why they create this, this seam effect. It also helps to shed the water, breaks the scale, you know, and it's highly durable. Mm -hmm. It's proven its track record in throughout New England over decades. Um, and the whole intent is that the roof would be this um, standing seam metal roof and, and also the dormers too, um, which you see here. Similarly, it's the same product, same material. Um, and of course it comes in a huge range of colors too, but most of it tends towards the silver 
gray palette, which is what we're proposing in, in some fashion. But again, there, there are variations in the color of this too, but that's what we're looking at. And pretty inexpensive is a choice. Yeah, it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a really cost-effective product. Yeah, yeah very It doesn't important. have the maintenance issues of the, for example, the right. shingles that you're currently experiencing. <laughs> Right. So if you go back to the um, Jones Library rendering, there's also skylights up there, which yep. you know that's a sensitive issue from our previous, our current building. Um, so how does that work? There's is there roofing on top of those triangles right. or so that we wouldn't call these skylights. No, they're right? not actually because a skylight for us is something that sits on the roof flat, so it has exposure on all sides. These, what are we calling these? They're really things? called monitors. They're really like, they're, they're angle like monitors. So yeah. for example, they're kind of the sawtooth pattern to Ellen's point. So you can see here on the sides, I know we don't have a rendering on the back, but unless it shows up in the front view, maybe it shows up in the front view. Let me see if I can get to that. Well, a little bit, you see this, it, this kind of black color. So that's a roof material and it's gonna be the same kind of um, probably standing seam metal roof on this surface. So the only area where there's glass is here. And there's a slight cant to the glass um, in order to capture a little bit of light, but literally beside the, the amount of that tilt can be slightly angled or it can be literally vertical, right? So in other words, it could be, it could be straight up and down. Um, and so yeah. it is not a skylight in that sense at all um, because it is only amount of glasses on this side, the north facing side and the south facing side to go back to the, you know, this front view um, here. We also had proposed, and I'm not sure where we are in the budget, originally that there was going to be opportunity for solar PVs because it's south facing. So all of these angled elements here, which are colored black, uh, do have that opportunity to be PVs. Um, and it's orienting rightly, you know, with the sun to facing south. Perfectly, yeah. Nice. Okay, that's... So we'll bring daylight into that top room, you know, like the rendering that you all have seen before in the interiors. That's going to bring up not a lot of natural, but north yeah, facing diffused, light into yeah. that top. It's all diffused. So there's no direct sunlight coming, streaming into that top level, but it'll be filled with light, which reduces, of course, the demand for artificial lighting. Great. I do love the sawtooth roof idea, um, but uh, that was interesting that you said it could go vertical as opposed to angle. If it, it were vertical, vertical, would that help with the, you know, preventing leaks in the future? Um, yeah. Th yeah, probably to some extent. I mean, this this is a very shallow pitch. It's maybe tilting 10 degrees or 15 degrees. But if we went fully, you know, zero degrees, or I mean, you know, up and down, um, yeah, we can. That's an absolute detailed refinement. We can we can explore um, if there's any concern about any of this being angled. I mean, so that can change. It's really pretty. It is. A question about materials. Um, mm -hmm. so it's a little hard to describe, but on the ground for second floor, there's mm -hmm. the storefront windows and they're surrounded by a white material. And mm -hmm. then on the right, on the second floor, the um, it looks like roofing material edges this around the boxes out the window. And then on what we were just talking about, those angle light monitors, the triangles on like the west side there. So I'm wondering what, you know, again, maintenance, are these painted, are these roof materials, what are they? No, I think we would all try to be, again, as low maintenance as possible. So the, the introduce, introduction of the metal roof uh, would be not only here, but also on these light monitors, all of that would be the same product, same look. So we wouldn't change it. So if it's this metal, that's metal, this is metal. Yep. So it gets consistent. And then um, this material here, I know um, we're, I don't remember what we carried exactly. I, I think it's, uh, we carried metal, white metal. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, it's a metal product too. It's white. Um, it's a little differentiated from this. I think we wanted to create a little bit of scale because we're also seeing here on these more traditional windows, um, the introduction of kind of, uh, you know, probably a white-ish frame. Um, I think it, it's apparently, it has some nod towards your historic building, which is sort of kind of white um, trim on the windows as well as the subdivided lights. So we're pinking off of that. So we did want to make a little bit of distinction here, but it's subtle, right? Because I think the whole palette is kind of this warm gray, tan, white, cream look. So we're trying to keep it very calm, um, kind of very understated and also very respectful of your existing historic library. 
I, I want a chance to kind of disagree, not kind of disagree. I'd like to disagree <laughs> with Austin about the can the centria, uh, the metal. So I don't think it should quite be off the table yet. And so as an example, uh, on, on the 1928 exterior wall, the east side, um, you can see where I'm pointing right now, right? So <laughs> there are lots of different materials there. You've got the stone, you've got the siding. Um, I don't see why we couldn't do a combination of metal and glass and and brick. I, I'm just, I think it could look really great. And granted, this is just my aesthetic, whatever, whatever the full committee wants, you're, you're not going to get any complaints from me. It will be awesome no matter what. But is there something to be said for the fact that this building is going to be built in 2025? as opposed to 1928. So is it really that awful to use products that were around in 2025? That's just my, that's me. Well, you know what? That's always a question, Sharon, because we're doing a big project um, in Brookline, where in Brookline, everybody wants wood siding, right? But this project is so large, it can't have wood siding because the client can't maintain it. So we're using a hardy board that looks like wood siding, but it will never rot. It's and it's just, right. and what it is, it's it, yeah. the, the point being, it's new technology. Yeah. And that's what I, cause it's, we might as well use the new technology cause it's less maintenance. It's, it's better insulating value. So that's what, what we're, the metal panel works for us in that sense. And, and as does the brick. I mean, yeah. the brick is tried and true. Wait. People love wood and for various reasons, and it's, it's of course very appropriate in New England. However, one thing that I think people are clearly discovering, the quality of the wood today is not the quality of the wood 100 years ago. You, as many of you know, the density of the wood and when wood was harvested back then and many buildings why they've stand and withstood so long, it's just the simple quality of the wood was much better. We are unfortunately, in you know, a lot of things that are happening in our world and in way things are enforced and deforestation, when buildings put up in wood, these buildings do not last. And you and you all know it, especially in some of the more, say, developer type projects where it's built a certain lifespan. And then after that, a lot of maintenance is needed. So unfortunately, um, even like, for example, the, the strong, um, I guess, museum next to this, that was built out of much more ancient wood, which is why it's withstood the test of time. It's just made with better products mm -hmm. and better natural materials than we could do today. Right. And there are there are cheaper materials that you could clad the exterior with. There's this it's called cementitious board, mm -hmm. uh, but we don't we wouldn't use it on a public library. It's just no. it's not it take it's it's maybe cheap, but it's a long term maintenance uh, cost that yeah. we don't think a library or town building should have to uh, shoulder. Yeah, yeah no. no, and I wasn't advocating for for wood necessarily because of those maintenance issues. We can't right. afford to keep that up. I just like the idea of a hint of that metal. Mm -hmm. oh, mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, that's a very helpful thing. I, I uh, a hint of the metal. It sounds fine to me. Uh, I was reacting to it as the primary uh, exterior cladding. Mm -hmm. And here's a question uh, which you may not be able to answer, but it would be really helpful at this point in the grossest terms to give us a sense of the cost differential between the metal cladding, the, the sculpted slate and the, and the brick. I mean, what is it in general in the ballpark we're talking about for the cost differential? We can't tell you that Austin right now because the cost of things has changed so much in the last three years. We, it's unfortunate our cost estimator was in Greece last this past week, so we couldn't get anything from him. Um, we will get, have some numbers for you as soon as we get them. We'll ship them out uh, to you. But in our from our previous experience, the metal panel is cheaper. But let us get that data to 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 so you can see it in black and white. <clears throat> that and makes sense. Of the relative, sorry, Christine, just one other thing on the cost in terms of the relative. Uh, the brick is likely to be the most, I mean, what is likely to be the most expensive, the metal I take it will be the, the brick. least. The brick, okay, thank you. So we're trying here at this design meeting to sort of figure out how to best present for you all to present this to the Jones Library Building Committee on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. um, 
could you give us just like, if it's like a cake, like options that we're looking at? And I know you can't give us exact prices, but you could say like, this would be the least expensive option. Sure. This would, we think would be the most expensive, meaning mm -hmm. whatever options. Right. Mm -hmm. And can you change, or I don't know how hard it is with your computer system to give us some renderings of these options. Cause like, I, I'm open to the metal siding or whatever. I'm sure whatever, you know, it's going to look great. But I am curious, like, how does that metal siding going vertical like clapboard look next to the roof metal that's going um, up and down and that kind of thing. So how much of it can you give us options and then give us let, let me try to thank you, Christy. Let me try to answer first about the rendering look. Um, so the render who did this, yeah, they're very fast. They're based in Asia. Um, now today is actually Dragon Festival Day, so they're off. <laughs> but I will reach out to the renderer to ask, like, to, as just to your point, like, okay, can we change the material cladding to show several options? Like, for example, we can say, can we do an all slate look? Can we do an all brick look? And then I guess the third would be like some either combination of the Maybe we just keep the slate at the bottom and go to metal, you yeah. know, right? So maybe those three options, and they're pretty fast, and I, I know that they work with us really well. So let me follow up on that. I can't promise we could have that by Tuesday, but I will, certainly after this meeting is ends, I will immediately reach out to them and just put it to them and see what they can do. And I think we're okay if it's not Tuesday. We were under the understanding that, you know, this is an early decision that you need to know as soon as possible. So okay. just... In do your so what, possible. <laughs> what I was thinking, Christine, because yeah. if what we did is over this past week, we, we looked at a bunch of options and we, we whittled it down to these two because we think it's the most affordable for the library. What an approach we can do is we can just pick, we can say, okay, we're going to go in through the end of SDs in brick and then have it priced for an alternate to be metal. We, we can do that, but I, and we yeah. can make that decision. I think, you know, I was thinking the same thing we talked about it to have these rendered in to show the metal, mm -hmm. it, it, we have to do it just so people can see yeah. the impact yeah. of it. Yeah. So let, let us work on that from our end on both Ellen's issue of cost, but I think the idea of a base scheme, which I think makes sense. And then these are alternates, metal or sculpting slate, you know, would be alternatives to the base scheme of all brick. Does that but make I, sense? So when is when is the, when's the committee meet again after Tuesday? So this one doesn't meet again um, until the twenty fourth, or yeah. Well, we do have one on the sixteenth that we could possibly, if you are in a pinch, we're going over comments at that point, um, or it wouldn't because that we would have be a field trip on the 10th, yeah. so it wouldn't be until the 24th. But like I said, at this point, um, you could bring it to a Jones Library uh, meeting and maybe um, Austin can speak to availability on that. We were thinking if this was a rush, it would be Tuesday, but it, I think it's two weeks after that. I think that's fine. And that would give us time to get a, the <coughs> renderings done so we can show people yeah. and we'll have better sense of cost. Yeah, I think the tenth. What we were saying, the sixteenth, is that what we're aiming for? Well, that for that definitely come helps. Back us. to us, or the twenty-first for the uh, two meetings from now for the Jones Library Committee as a whole. Oh, Josephine, what you're you're the one with our dates we're shooting for? Yeah, so pretty much the end of June um, for the package. For the, well, the earlier we can get this in front of folks to review, the better. Right. Yes. In order to not squeeze us. Right. So Tuesday is the full committee. Tuesday so, is the full so, committee on the seventh, and then again on the twenty-first. And I do think mm -hmm. having renderings that show the options will be helpful. Huge. Yeah. Yeah. Let me let me see what I can do with the renders. See how quickly like, they accelerate. Like Ellen. So Chris, if, if, I, if I think that showing the full committee on Tuesday. Uh, getting people thinking about this is going to be very useful. Awesome. Okay. So you've already heard interesting, you know, things about the the design. This is going to be very important to people. Okay. And if you're looking for the end of June, uh, I think doing whatever it is that we can do uh, on Tuesday is going to be helpful to the process because you're going to get reactions. 
Yeah. Okay. Good okay. questions. Yeah. Let's do that. Wait. Yeah. That's a good point, Austin. Yeah, let's do so it. So today you went, you know, really deep on materials, and we can always refer people back to watch this video if they want more details, you know, public or whatever. But on Tuesday, again, if you can sort of give us different options of cake, like this, this, and this, and sort of tie them to cost. Okay. So that's it. So if we get the, that's easy to do, Christine, if we get the renderings. Yeah. Or even if you don't have the renderings by then, but um, if you don't have the renderings, do you still want to come on Tuesday? I think, I think, I think Austin is correct. I think, and we can pare this down and not go into as much detail, just so people understand, get a flavor that we're looking at two different things. Uh, and then we'll follow it up with some renderings because there, you know, people may have a bad reaction to middle. So may I just say again, uh, I, I, I think that we should do this on Tuesday. I don't think that you need the whole team okay. uh, for Tuesday. And you're going to just give people a sense just the way you've given us. Here are some of the materials that we're looking at. Um, I think that's the, that's the way to go. And go when, you, when you have renderings, you have renderings. If we need to schedule another meeting to, in order to help you, we'll do that. But okay. let's give us a preview, just like we've done here. You'll get reactions. You don't need the whole, you know, the 15 people from FAA to be there right. because no final decisions are being made. This is just a preview. And okay. you accumulate questions that people have and not answer them. Say, you know, we'll get back to you. Okay. I, I would in the interest of time as a suggestion, if if the render is able to help. My suggestion would be have if because we're exploring a couple of options, have them tackle the metal option first. I think people are going to understand brick inherently, and even probably because well, it's this. You it's, this. Say it's and, this, and even the sculpting um, slate. I think people can imagine that. I mean, we can do it, but I think this metal is the one that's the most potentially in question. So let me see if I can focus them, and then to further save on effort, if I can have them focus on the rear rendering first versus the front, just to speed up the amount of effort, that's probably the one that's the most helpful if, if you're okay with that. I'm gonna see what I can do with her to try to see what she's able to do, but in order to try to contain at least this first out of the gate thing um, for next Tuesday, if it's possible to head towards that version with the metal on the rear rendering first. And if not, we'll do a pared down discussion of what we just did today, Austin. Yeah, exactly, okay. Ellen, just to backtrack on <clears throat> what you were saying earlier, of Oh, for um, SD, we should, could kind of just roll with the we brick could assumption. Do, yeah, we could do it as an alternate, Christine. And we might want to talk about maybe doing a few other alternates just so we get we can look at alternate pricing, right? Just so we have a fallback position. If, if we have extra money, we can upgrade something or we need to save some money, we can make some adjustments to materials. So we can do go in this as, you know, brick, is the base, is what's the base estimate, but then ask for an alternate price to clad it in metal. And if that's, because SD is rolling here, so um, if you all, oh, some of you come on Tuesday and sort of, you know, give options, would it be two weeks later, then you want a decision or another or, couple of weeks when you're actually at the end of SD, when would a decision have to be made? I think, Christine, now that we've <clears throat> pared this all down, I think we could go through SDs um, as base as brick in, in granite sculptings at, in an alternate material to be metal and get a price for both. And then when we get the estimate, full estimate on SDs, we can decide which way to go. Because in, 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 at this point, there's some, it's not, there's some technical um, wall details we do, but it, there's not a ton. Okay. And these are very similar, so it's not, it, it's not a heavy lift from our side. And we're trying to be flexible because we're trying to keep this going, and we know you guys have, have um, your committees, but I, I think I'm, we do this often. This is not unusual. But I, I will note, though, before we go to MHC, which is after SDs, we need to have a material selected. Okay. So at this point, um, Tony, you're okay. gonna be in touch with Craig um, to tell us what, it, mm -hmm. or to update yeah. us what will actually happen on Tuesday. If you yes. can 
keep Austin in the loop on that. We, we email Craig a lot. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll definitely keep Craig in the loop mm -hmm. and, and show what the status of all of this is, where we are and what we can actually do. Okay. Um, and we'll bring that up on the agenda on Tuesday. It will be under uh, design subcommittee report. And that's when you would, you all would present your bid. Yes. And that meeting's at 4.30. Okay. And we don't have to take a lot of time. We, you know, we can do this quick, uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, great. I mean, I think it's, it's like Austin said, it's, it's, to get people thinking, set expectations, and mm -hmm. um, and of course, cost. You know, we're we're going to have to think of areas where we can be um, cost effective. Yes. So, are there any other questions for FA uh, on regard to exterior materials? I don't. Do you, Josephine? I'm well, we thank yeah. you. I mean, it's gonna, it's like Sharon said, it's gonna look gorgeous either way, It how whatever is used. Um, and excited to see some pictures of what it, you know, finally will look like. Okay. Um, Great. Well, thank you for, thank your, you for your time. Yeah, and thank you guys. Uh, thank you all. Good work. Uh, I'm gonna move on to uh, okay. item number four, topics not anticipated. Um, we'll I jump off none. Then. Thank you all. Have Thank a great weekend. Thank Thanks. You. Thank Take you guys. Bye. Um, and Craig, nothing. Um, nothing um, substantial. Uh, we did have, um, well, as you and Sharon know, we did have a meeting with Eversource yesterday to talk about um, energy use incentives. And so I'll do a quick summary of that at the Tuesday Library Building Committee to catch everybody up. But um, in short, there is uh, some great opportunities out there. And um, I think there are some that this project will be eligible for. Fantastic. Thank you. And we'll uh, hear about that on Tuesday. Um, <clears throat> so item number five is public comment. I don't know, uh, we still have four. At this time, uh, if there's any attendees, uh, I see four of you. If you have a question or a comment, uh, please raise your hand at this time and uh, we'll open it up to you. And I'll give this a moment. Um, and I'll just also say at this time that uh, our next meeting will uh, be on the 16th, which is a Thursday, which is a little different, uh, to go over uh, like round two of evaluating public comment. And our next regular meeting will be June 24th, um, back at the 9 a.m. time. Okay, I see one hand, uh, Bob Pam, welcome. Thank you. Um, I had to, to go off for a moment, so I may have missed the opportunity, um, <clears throat> but my, Major concern on the exterior rear wall, the north side, is that the, um, the, the bank of windows surrounded by a, a white surround um, is, is not a good idea, I think, for a couple of reasons. One, the, um, the windows appear to be floor to ceiling and floor to ceiling is, I, I, I wonder about, uh, both from a cost perspective and from a utility perspective. Um, a, they are north facing. Uh, <clears throat> windows are by their nature far less insulating than uh, other wall materials. So it will be bringing as much cold in as as is likely to occur anywhere. Um, and that is <clears throat> problematic. And then from, a, from an operational perspective, a floor to ceiling window means that you cannot put uh, people directly in front of it. It would be better if the windows were smaller, they'd be cheaper, they'd be uh, less, uh, less, uh, and, 
<clears throat> intrusive, I says, I guess, into use use by uh, patrons. Um, it would be better if they were smaller, and one could actually sit in front of it, maybe turn them into window seats of some kind. But the the idea is uh, these uh, floor to ceiling windows, I think, are just not a good idea from a, uh, a perspective of looks. Uh, on the west side, you've got dormers. And if you were using the equivalent of, of the same kind of dormers on the second floor, that would be fine. And having it be a block that goes two floors uh, with the white surround uh, is not actually a very good look. So I would say avoid these floor to ceiling windows and uh, do it on both first and second floor. Thank you. Thank you for those thoughts, Mr. Pam. And they have been noted and they'll be in the minutes. Um, any other comments or suggestions from the attendees? As seeing now, and um, one of our members just uh, left. So we're actually just at this very moment, we're not at quorum. So I'm ending the meeting. We are adjourned until the next meeting. Thank you, everyone. This was very helpful. We'll see you soon, probably on Tuesday. Thanks for seeing you. Bye, Bye everybody. Thank you, Angela. <laughs>